Welcome back to our Lent devotionals. I'm Pastor Corey Smith here at Richmond Lutheran. Very glad to have you with me whenever you're watching this. Um, I went to Richland High. I graduated in 1989, and uh, wow, that's a long time ago. Oof, I got a reunion coming up. Anyways, during that time, in kind of the mid to late 80s, uh, a picture of Richland High's mascot, the mushroom cloud, made it into National Geographic, which then caused kind of a national firestorm about this mushroom cloud. Even uh, newspapers in Europe were carrying stories and pictures of it. Well, during this whole time, Richland High um, had asked me if I would take the original design of the mushroom cloud and just slightly tweak it and uh, do several other designs and then we were going to vote on which one to use. So as all this is going on and it's gaining more and more national attention, one day I'm sitting in the mixing area and a journalist, news journalist from one of the national um, news outlets, I can't remember if it was NBC or CBS, one of those, approached me and said, are you Corey Smith? I said, uh, yes. They introduced themselves and they said, we understand you designed the mushroom cloud. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't design the mushroom cloud. That thing had been around long before me. And I wanted to make sure they understood that very clearly because I did not want to be misrepresented. Now, I bet every person watching this has at some time been misrepresented, um, either with what we do or who we are in life, however that may work itself out. And it's kind of embarrassing and frustrating because you have to say, no, that, that, that's not me. Well, one of the things I want you to consider today, as we've been talking about um, discipleship and discipling other people, um, please make sure you don't misrepresent who God is. I want to read to you out of, uh, this is Exodus chapter 34. And I think this kind of sums up this incredible picture of who God is. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning, as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the stone, two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. It's an interesting picture because it, it highlights the fact that God is loving, he's compassionate, that he's mighty, that he's powerful, but it also reminds us that God is our judge and that he's holy, and that he's perfect, and that he will judge sin. And I think too often we misrepresent who God is by giving a picture that, well, he's, he's loving all the time and there is no judgment in God. He's kind of like Santa Claus. If you just ask him nicely, maybe he'll give you something. Or the other side, that God is just this fiery God of judgment just waiting to destroy us at the drop of a hat. And if we lean too far in either of those directions, we're not really telling people who God is. And as we're discipling people, you know, the point of discipleship is to bring someone along in their faith, is we have to make sure that when we're telling people about who God is, we have to give them the full picture. Because God is holy and God is love and all of these things make him who he is, which is an incredible thing. So. I did want to add one last thing. After God said all these things, it says Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. I think that's the key. That's the proper reaction when we truly get to see God for who he is and not some extreme or 
some way that we've tried to create him in our image, the natural reaction is going to be to fall down and worship him. And so let's make sure that we're giving people the accurate picture of who our God is. Let's pray. Lord, you know us. You know how uh, we like to try and, and create you in our image because it's easier that way. It's easy to focus on just the things we like to focus on about who you are. Um, but God, that doesn't give an accurate picture of who you are. You have revealed yourself through your word um, to be holy and perfect and a God of justice, but also a God of compassion and mercy and love, which incredibly is all seen in what Jesus did uh, in his life, his death, and his resurrection. So help us as we are helping others to see you for who you truly are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.